Welcome back. Sometimes art and music can accomplish things in a way words cannot. Our next story is proof. It's a sentimental jazz journey from New York to Havana. Grammy award-winning pianist Arturo O'Farrell is the son of legendary Cuban musician Chico O'Farrell, who in the 1940s and 50s brought Afro-Cuban jazz to the United States. His father never returned to Cuba after the revolution in 1959, but now that President Obama has eased restrictions on cultural exchanges between the two countries, his son Arturo has become a regular visitor, trying to rebuild bridges between Cuba and American jazz. Our correspondent in Havana, Michael Voss, met up with him on his most recent visit and got a backstage pass to his band jam. and Americans performing together on the same stage. It's a makeshift ensemble put together for a week by U.S. big band leader Arturo O'Farrell. On this trip, he's, the band is called Three Generations in honor of Arturo's Cuban-born father, Chico O'Farrell. Composer, conductor, and trumpet player, Chico rose to fame in the United States, collaborating with jazz greats like Dizzy Gillespie in blending Afro-Latin rhythms with mainstream American jazz. I first came to Cuba to complete a journey that my father began. He never returned and was very vehemently anti-engagement, anti-Castro, all that stuff, but he died very brokenhearted. He died, and the one thing that really broke his heart was he was that, never able to return to Cuba. And it amazed me, because when he finally yielded to sensi sensibility and decided that he would not allow the political pressure of a certain sector of the American public, uh, he was too old. He was physically unable to fly. Wow, this is so cool, man. Look at this thing. Come on, man. Arturo and his sons are able to see for themselves the city where the elder O'Farrell grew up. Growing up in New York with a Cuban father, what were you hearing about Cuba in those days? Oh, I was thinking about this today. You hear so much garbage that's like completely inaccurate. You hear about people, it almost sounds like it's this like Hieronymus Bosch painting. There's people suffering in the streets and there's like, like, you know, just people dying and there's poverty. But there's poverty in the Bronx. There's heartbreaking violence in the United States within blocks, within miles of my house. So, uh, you know, a lot of the misinformation comes really from as much of a propaganda machine there as there is here. The O'Farrells then invited me to join them during one of their rehearsals. Like so much in Cuba, this was not a professional studio, but rather a makeshift back room in someone's house. Finding it was a matter of following the music. I can hear them rehearsing. Let's go see what they're up to. to engage in a conversation that I'm trying to restart. The Cuban musician and the jazz musician recognized that they were cousins, maybe even brothers, perhaps twins, but they were recognizing that there was a, prog a progression, a future in recognizing each other, but they hadn't quite reached it when the conversation started. Secretary General de las Naciones Unidas. The conversation stopped when the United States broke off diplomatic relations in the early 1960s after Fidel Castro's revolution turned the island into the only communist country in the Americas. Now the 
Olivia Farrells have teamed up with some of Cuba's top jazz musicians, like trumpet player Jacek Manzano, who won a scholarship to the Juilliard School of Music in New York. Cubans are very smart, and they have, they're rightly suspicious of anybody who comes into their territory, especially American, and says, this is the great thing we're bringing to you. Um, so, in a sense, I also have felt a sense of resistance and suspiciousness on our part. Then they hear us play. And then they hear us play and realize that we come from them. And there were plenty of Cubans lining up to hear them play. Their most recent visit was for the annual International Jazz Festival in Havana, where they featured as one of the headline acts. The opening act was a young band led by a female drummer, Yissi Garcia. Blending modern day DJs with more traditional Afro Latin jazz. Next came the great diva of Cuban music, 83 year old Omara Portuondo of Buena Vista Social Club fame. She was accompanied by the classically trained jazz pianist and composer Harold Lopez Nusa. Finally, it was time for the headline act. Arturo O'Farrell and his sons, along with their Cuban guest band, The Power of Jazz to Unite. The one message I had for them is, you know, this thing comes from you. This thing comes from you. We're here to give you things. We're here to recognize you and honor you, not to teach you. We're here to say that jazz is a Pan-American art form refined in the United States and in Cuba, but it really comes from the Americas, and we're here to thank you for the contributions you've made to my life. Back at his rehearsal studio, I asked Arturo O'Farrell if he'd play something for us well, to close out like to, this I report. Like, I mean, I love, I'll play you out with a composition of my father's which he would have been happy to have heard in his native land. That was wonderful, and that was your father's. <laughs> that was my father's. And finally emotion. played in Cuba. Uh, yeah, yeah. That's very Thank touching. you, Michael. Thank, Thank you, you, sir. Michael Voss in Havana, thanks for that report. In recent years, the audience for jazz music has been shrinking. Jazz first began in the United States in the 1920s, and most avid listeners of the genre have gotten older or passed on. Cultural exchanges like Arturo's help expose jazz to new generations and keep its influence alive. 